How's it going guys? It's your boy BB Malloy back at it again with Scrutinize the Week Part 8. This week we're going to be taking a look at giant potatoes, Banksy, scorpions biting people and a whole lot more. Roll the intro. Starting off this week in our very own country of New Zealand and Doug the Potato has been named the biggest in the world. Kiwi farmers Donna and Colin Craig Brown have unearthed this behemoth of a potato weighing in at 7.8 kilograms. The previous record was held by a British potato, but that potato only weighed about 5 kilograms. As a father, I can properly attest to the next time a cafe bowl of fries is put in front of me and someone whips out one of those massive chips that looks like it shouldn't be there, I'm going to think fondly of Doug, the world's biggest potato. Over to the UK now and an original Banksy has been painted over by none other than Christopher Walken. I know what you're thinking, it's a travesty, it's an outrage, yada yada yada. However, since the incident, both the producers of the show that Christopher Walken was a part of when he did it and Banksy's representatives have both been incredibly quiet about the situation. The gag was a part of the season finale of a show called The Outlaws created by Stephen Merchant. This show is based around a ragtag group of people who repay their debt to society by doing various community service type things and Christopher Walken is one of the people who needs to repay their debt. In the last scene of the series finale, Walken is seen painting over it, ultimately destroying an original Banksy artwork. I'm sure Christopher Walken is holding out for it to be repainted with two mice this time because, you know, from this, from the movie. Too nice. Wow. <laughs> Over to the US now, and an emotional support duck has completed the 50th annual New York City Marathon. Wrinkle the duck, as she is known, and her YouTube counterpart have gone viral this week as her little red booties helped her to run the entire length of the marathon, garnishing some 1.8 million likes on TikTok and a boost of over 100,000 views, and they've finally tipped over 100,000 subscribers on their channel, Seductive. Great name for a channel, great name. They can now put their name alongside such accolades as the Aflac Duck. For those of you who don't know what Aflac is, it's an insurance type company in the States. Their logo is a duck. And then they commented on Seductive's Instagram saying ducks supporting ducks because there's that duck life, you know what's good. It's just very wholesome. There's nothing really particularly funny or different about it. I just, it was quite wholesome. Our boy Elon is back in the headlines again with his technology company Neuralink creating some pretty Tony Stark type business. Neuralink has showcased a piece of technology that will allow paralyzed people to type up to 99% accuracy and 90 words a minute by implanting a chip into their brain, this will allow them to communicate with others. The idea is that if they put the chip in the person's brain, they think of what's being written by hand and it appears on the screen in front of them. This goes to show how untapped the human brain is and how massively capable of amazing things we are. I'm looking forward to the first novel written by these people, it's going to be amazing. There's no punchline there, it's just, it's going to be great. Over to Israel now and an ancient amethyst ring has been discovered by the Israel Antiques Society. You may remember we talked about the Israel Antiques Society a couple of weeks ago when a broadsword was found just off the coast. This amethyst ring, however, apparently cures hangovers. Now I'm a skeptical man by all accounts, but if this is the kind of magic there actually is in the world, I'll take five. The ring was found during an excavation in Ye Ye Yevne, Ye Yevne. I'm sorry, I don't know, but it's it's definitely around there somewhere. The ring was found near the remains of something called amphorae, which was a type of jar used to hold wine. It wasn't the only virtue that this ring was blessed with, there were many more, but I'm assuming that this was the most important one when it comes to humans. Once again, I'll take five. I will buy five of these. Over to the UK again now, and venomous sharks have been found living in the River Thames. The good news is the River Thames is coming back to life after being declared biologically dead in the 1960s. The bad news is that among the dozens of species that have moved into the River Thames, there is uh, there's venomous sharks. So, 
Good times. Honestly, it sounds like something Dr. Evil's come up with. It's just like, it's too, it's too good to be true. Over to the US now, and at the LA Arts and Film Gala, a video has surfaced of Leonardo DiCaprio being Mr. Steal Your Girl. Jeff Bezos' girlfriend Lauren Sanchez can be seen cozying up to DiCaprio, looking up at him as if he were God himself, while the richest man in the world that she actually brought with her stands behind him in amazement. Honestly, in this video, this chick looks like she's ready to risk it all. It's just too good. Bezos responded a few days later after the video went viral, standing in front of a sign that says Fatal Drop, and the tweet reads, Hey Leo, come over here, I have to show you something. It's kind of like half joking, but when you're the richest man in the world, you just, you never know. I wouldn't be too worried about Leo though, I'd be checking his lady's DMs and seeing who she's messaging. In Australia now, and firefighters have been called to a house where a kangaroo has become stuck on a roof. In the Queensland town of Mount Isa, emergency authorities were called to the house first thinking it was a hoax, only to turn up and see there's an actual real live kangaroo sitting on the roof. No one knows how it got there, they still don't know how it got there. The firefighters donned their full on harnesses and rescue equipment, jumped up on the roof, tried to sort of cautiously go over to the kangaroo, and the kangaroo went to the edge of the roof and yeeted itself off. Just see you later straight off the side of the building. Thankfully, unhurt, landed in some shrubs and buggered off into the outback because, you know, Australia. The next time they get called for a kangaroo on the roof, I think they'll be a little bit less suspicious. To the final frontier now, and SpaceX astronauts are going to have to arrive back to Earth in nappies. The Dragon Endeavour mission to the International Space Station took place at the start of April of this year, and they are due to splash down in more ways than one on Monday. Due to a broken toilet aboard their ship, they haven't been able to relieve themselves in anywhere else except their Space huggies? I, I, I don't know what they're- are they space depends? I guess it depends. I, I don't know. But when they get back into Earth's atmosphere, guarantee Elon himself will come in, congratulate them on a successful mission, change their nappies, give them a bottle, tuck them into bed. Brave astronauts. Brave. Insane news out of Egypt now, and a storm in the Aswan province on the banks of the Nile has driven not only floods into this town, but literally thousands of scorpions. These scorpions are called death stalkers, and they have killed five people and wounded 500 more in a week. That is insane. Like, not only are you rebuilding your house because a storm has just destroyed it, and then you've got these little scorpion pricks just everywhere. Honestly, fam, it's time to move house, okay? It's time to vamoose. Why would I just honestly, as soon as I saw the herd of scorpions marching towards my burrow, I'd be gone. I'd be so gone. Everything would be in my knapsack and I'd be legging it to Cairo. Let's go. And now we're going to round out the week again with Scrutinize the Past. You know this series by now. It's where we take a look at what's happened over the last couple of millennia in this week. Let's go. 1805, Lewis and Clark finished their trek to the Pacific Ocean in Sacagawea, it's fun to say. Sacagawea, 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 Sacagawea. 1815, Herman Melville publishes Moby Dick, and school children everywhere think it's hilarious. 1859, and the first flying trapeze act is finished by Jules Leotard at the Circus Napoleon. 1862, and Lewis Carroll begins writing the infamous Alice in Wonderland. 1867, Mount Vesuvius erupts. 1922, and the BBC starts its regular broadcasting. 1973 and the Soviet Union is kicked out of the Football World Cup after refusing to play against Chile. 1983 and infamous beer brewer Alfred Heineken is kidnapped and held to ransom for 10 million dollars. 1989 German citizens begin tearing down the Berlin Wall. 1990 and Sir Timothy John Berners-Lee, a British computer scientist, publishes a formal proposal for the creation of the World Wide Web. And in 2001, the original Xbox is released, produced by one of the richest people in the world, and it still wasn't as good as the PlayStation. No hate. It's just, it's all love, but PlayStation's way better. Well, that's going to wrap it up here for Scrutinize the Week, ladies and gentlemen. That was episode 8. The 42 Facts videos aren't quite popping off as hard as I thought they would, so I'm going to take some time rehash it, come back with something new. I may even start a new channel. That one's going to be more dedicated to music than anything else. But Scrutinize the Week is still going to happen once a week, every week. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, like and subscribe. If you know someone who might want to subscribe, share it with them. 
I've been stuck at around 206 subscribers for weeks now. Come on, give us a boost, it'll be sweet. In any case, you've been amazing, I've been BB Malloy, this has been Scrutinize the Week, and I will catch you on the next one.